Now you then went to <laughs> Moscow. Congratulations. I had, I was around then and I remember it. I remember some of the headlines. I can't even imagine what it was like for you. So you, so again, if you could set the scene for somebody who's perhaps not familiar with what, what happened with anything but an ordinary Olympic games. Yeah, sure. And I mean, that was a lot when I wrote my book boycott, which was my yes. first nonfiction book about the Olympics. Uh, you are not alone in that people would come up to me yeah. after and say, well, I was around, but I don't know what I was doing. I just don't remember it being like that. No. Um, and so essentially the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in the end of 1979. Mm -hmm. um, within the first weeks of January, the, um, the president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, had called for a boycott. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm Fraser, our prime minister, along with Margaret Thatcher and a whole lot of other prime yeah. ministers said, yeah, we think that's a, a great idea. Um, we'll, we'll go along with that. However, Malcolm Fraser wasn't willing to make that decision himself. And likewise, huh. um, Margaret Thatcher, the British um, Olympic Committee said very early on, they were one of the first in March, we're going, you know, Mrs. Thatcher might know a lot about politics, but she doesn't know anything about the Olympics. So mm. get lost essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but we yeah. were much kind, gentle or not quite as willing to um, go against the government. Our Olympic Federation took quite a while. So it wasn't until May the 23rd that those 11 men met and voted 6-5 that we would go. Mm. Um, and during that whole period, so at first I hadn't, the first, like in the first couple of months, the uh, trials were in March. So it was really just no point worrying about something until you actually make the team. <laughs> yeah. And then once I made the team in March, and I was also named captain of that team you were. in year 11, so suddenly it was not, um, you know, how will you go, but why should you go? So you're talking to the media. Here I am, the 16-year-old, getting a very fast lesson on you know, geopolitics and what, where Afghanistan is, for God's sake. Um, and also just, you know, explaining to the, you know, the community why we should go and why I should fulfill my little dream when the world was trying to fight communism. Um, and, you know, you could, as I tell the kids, you could swap communism for terrorism. The communists yeah. were coming to take away our way of life. And, yeah. um, and that, you know, that's how we prepared, really. And so it was a matter of just, you know, training um, for this event that you hope that you would get to. Um, I'd be at home doing an English, um, you know, assignment. I get a phone call. You know, it was, it was a person from the, it was a journalist, you know, Neville Rand's just put in $100,000 to the, you know, Olympic campaign because all the sponsors were dropping out. So, oh, you know, wow. And how do you feel? So I'd give my, you know, feeling of that. Somebody was supporting us. Great. Yay. Go back to my English um, assignment. But also within the, that sort of first week, really, of being made captain, we then started getting, you know, death threats. So we had a whistle mm. by the telephone. That's what the police um, recommended mm. that we do. So at least we could blow the whistle really loudly when one mm. of these calls came. And I think sometimes, even with social media, like at least when you had a phone call, yeah. you had a whistle, yes. you felt you had agency. Yeah. I could do something, you yes. know. Whereas with the social media stuff, you're just bombarded with it. If you, with the relentless you know, nature of on. it. Yeah. So we were lucky in that sense. But again, it was my parents were just very, they're just yes. very common sense people. Like, well, I was allowed to go to the footy and I was, I'd go to training and I'd go to the, Olymp uh, to the movies with friends. And eventually it was in that period where we first started going to see bands. You know, back in those days, you didn't have to, you could sort of, the bouncer let you in. The best local bands pop, then, back then. Then you could get the in. Best bands. <laughs> best day. Oh. So Australian Call and Split Ends and oh, all of those remember. bands kept me sane. Yeah. And then, and then we got on the, eventually got on the, on the um, plane to go on the 1st of July. But it took, it was the 23rd of May and then, um, and then there was another meeting. The AOF agreed to one more meeting with the Prime Minister and he tried to convince them again. And then they voted again. I think the vote was even less. It was more like 7-3. Seven, seven, so so the, the AOF was really, the members of the Olympic Committee were pretty angry by that point that Fraser kept pressuring them when he'd said mm. that um, he wouldn't. Mm. Well, and also, of course, the government was giving money to sports and to individuals to withdraw. Never given government money before wow. to athletes. And so the first time that the Australian government ever gave money to Olympic athletes was to withdraw from the Olympic Games. It was crazy. It was a crazy time. 